Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm State Representative Michael Bell from the 7th Ohio House District of Cabot County and Chairman of the House Committee on Policy and Legislative Oversight. Certainly glad you joined us this morning to learn about some of the election reforms that we've been engaged in over the past year or so. As you may be aware, Democrats and Republicans have been attempting to enhance Ohio's election processes for nearly a decade. These enhancements have focused around three areas. One, modernizing Ohio's election process. Two, ensuring uniformity of access to the polls for all Ohioans. And three, guaranteeing the accuracy and integrity of our voter rolls. Two of the most recent overhauls, House Bill 260, sponsored by Democratic Representatives Stewart and Heard in the 128th General Assembly, and House Bill 194, a Republican-led measure in the 129th General Assembly, were based largely on the work of former Secretary of State Jennifer Bruner and her bipartisan working group, which culminated in the election in the report, Elections Enhancements for Ohio. What the public has witnessed during both of these attempts at election reform, I believe, was the proclivity of the party in power to enact election reform through massive bills. During the last General Assembly, we heard that House Bill 194 was too large, proceeded too fast, and was not advanced through a committee process in a bipartisan manner. As a member of the State Government and Elections Committee during the 129th General Assembly, I witnessed firsthand how a large piece of legislation could prevent legislators from fully understanding and digging into each specific piece of a given bill. This is why I'm particularly pleased that our colleagues in the Senate began a deliberative, thoughtful process last year to look at election reform as a series of issues ranging from database maintenance and ADA compliance to provisional ballots and electronic poll books. This has not only provided legislators with the ability to look at each issue separately, but it has permitted us to proceed at a pace which allows for discussion of all these issues with many of the interested and affected stakeholders, the League of Women Voters, the Ohio Association of Election Officials, the County Commissioners Association of Ohio, to name just a few. On the chart to my right, over the left, we'll see eight bills which have worked their way through our committee, most of which have already been enacted, two more of which will reach the House floor today, and, uh, and uh, the second to last of which they're still in committee will come out probably next week. Each piece of legislation is limited and almost singular in scope. I think I've read that provision somewhere about a, a single subject uh, rule in the Ohio Constitution. This has allowed for a thorough discussion of each issue with some bills being considered for almost three months in our House committee alone. That doesn't count the time in the Senate committee, it doesn't count the time uh, that it took to proceed through the other chamber. With this substantive amount of time, and with the passion some individuals and groups bring to the topic of election reform, this has allowed our committee and our counterpart committee in the Senate to work across party lines to incorporate suggestions as amendments or in substitute versions of the legislation. <coughs> I must note, however, my disappointment at the partisan direction the majority of these bills have taken, both in the House and in the Senate. On my left, you'll see a sample of our process that the committee has undertaken on election reforms with the two measures that will be on the House floor this afternoon. During committee, we've heard from uh, the sponsors of each legislation. They've expressed their willingness to work with our friends on the other side of the aisle on ways to improve their legislation. On countless occasions, both in committee on the House floor and in meeting with the ranking member, I have expressed my personal commitment to bipartisanship when it comes to election reform and other legislation before our committee. Now, some may believe that bipartisanship is submitting an amendment to the committee's to the chairman's office two minutes before the deadline or after the amendment deadline. These individuals may also believe that bipartisanship requires not talking with the sponsor of the legislation or any other member on the committee in order to gain support for an amendment they plan to offer. Others believe, however, that bipartisanship is finding common ground with those who have different ideas about legislation and working to incorporate any good idea into legislation under consideration. Ask any voter in our state which of those two statements best reflects bipartisanship. I suspect that in the main, Ohioans would tell you the latter reflects the true spirit and meaning of bipartisanship, a process which has occurred countless times in our committee and a hand of fellowship which has been extended again and again, only to be bitten each time. Lastly, a word about the coarse nature of today's political rhetoric and the perils of hyperbole. 
and a plea that those on the other side of the aisle take caution in using such inflammatory language.